Welcome everyone and good afternoon. Before our worship experience begins, we'd like to make you aware of a few things. Please remember that our new Sabbath school time is 9 a.m. via Facebook and Zoom. Please continue to remain faithful in your giving. We thank you for your faithfulness. We encourage you to prepare your hearts to receive what God has in store for you today. The North Church desires to be a unified body of believers that represents the love of Jesus. We achieve this by being northbound through nurture, outreach, relationship, truth, and the Holy Spirit. May God bless you to receive a blessing and be a blessing today. Good afternoon and happy Sabbath, everyone. Whatever your prayer position is, I ask that you take it at this time because it is prayer time. We're going to communicate to our Heavenly Father and just ask that He bless the rest of the service and that He gets the glory, honor, and praise. Amen, somebody? Amen. Father God, we thank you so much for this beautiful day. We thank you for the opportunity to come to you once again in prayer and the power of prayer. Help us to recognize that every breath that we take is a blessing because not everybody has that opportunity. So we're just thankful, God that you've given us another opportunity to use the breath that you've given us to give you praise because your word says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord for you are worthy to be praised. So we just ask, Lord, that you will be in this service, that your spirit will just permeate this place, that you will be present and that you will help us to be aware of your presence. And Lord, we pray for those who are taking the commitment to be baptized, amen, somebody. We're just thankful so much for the souls that have decided to make that commitment. And we pray that no weapon formed against them shall prosper and that they will continue in this journey and remain committed to you. No matter how hard it gets, we just pray that you will help them stay focused on you and to give you the glory, honor, and praise. And we pray that you will be with our leaders the musicians, that you will be with everyone that leads in worship, that they may be following you, giving you the glory, the honor, and the praise. And may the word that we hear transform our lives, and may we leave different than we came. In Jesus' name we thank you and pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Amen, amen. Let's put our hands together and give God some praise in this place. place today. Happy Sabbath, everyone. To those of you who are visiting for the first time, I want to just take a brief moment to introduce myself. My name is Pastor Jemison, but I also go by Pastor Jay. And right here on my left, your right, is our assistant pastor, Pastor Sherry Holm. And we have the privilege of pastoring this wonderful congregation called the North Philadelphia SDA Church, also known as the North Church, where we believe without a shadow of a doubt that it's only North from, come on, talk to me, that it's only oh, north from here. here. Once more, let's put our hands together and give God some praise. Amen and amen. At this time, beloved, I have the distinct honor and privilege of dedicating, ah, dedicating a little precious one on today, little Zaire Goldsmith. And so at this time, I want to ask for Dominique and the immediate family, if you will be so kind to join me up front at this time. Yeah, that's all right. You can put your hands together. Yes, Lord. These, as they're coming, I want to ask one of my deacons if you will come and please, or one of my elders and assist the ladies up here for me, please. Thank you so much. These are moments that we cherish. These are moments that are memorable. And we thank God for the opportunity. If you all would just come and just, you could just stand right here, right here in front of these, these banners, I appreciate it. Good to see you. Let's come on, stand right here. Every 
everyone else can just come and meet me right here. Just line up right back here. this young lady having a conversation with the Lord. And I just want to tell you a little bit about this conversation. Is that all right? I promise I won't keep you long. Is that all right, family? And so Hannah in her conversation with the Lord is, 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 is asking the Lord that, Lord, if you could bless me with a child. Now, she was specific. Lord, if you can bless me with a son, a baby boy, then I promise, is what she said, I promise, Lord, that I will give him back to you, that I will dedicate him to you, my God. Now, can I tell you that Hannah kept her word because God blessed her. God, in fact, and indeed honored that request, y'all. And the Bible says that she gave birth to this beautiful little boy. And after this little boy was weaned, around the age of about two or three, she took him, without hesitation or reservation, to the house of the Lord. She took him to the temple, now, Dominique, and she kept her promise. She gave her little boy back unto God, and she dedicated little Samuel. Hannah, I'm calling you Hannah because you remind me of this similar situation in this story. Because like Hannah, you too decided to bring your baby boy to the house of the Lord. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Even looks like, yeah, come on, come on, come on, come on, now it's like, amen. Uh, you see, every, every, every God-fearing parent, Dominique, has to eventually reach this place in life. They have to eventually reach the place in life where they, they recognize that there is only so far you can take your child. You reach the place in life where you recognize there's only so much you can do for your child. You reach the place, Dominique, where you realize that there is only so much protection that you can offer and provide for your child. Now, hopefully, most God-fearing parents will reach this place sooner than later. And I'm so thankful that you realized it sooner. Because when you get to this place, you recognize that you can't rear this little one up in the fear and the admonition of the Lord by your lonesome. You can't do it by yourself, but you need help. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Amen. You need help. And the kind of help you need is a help <laughs> that comes from the Lord. You see, each child is filled with purpose. You really don't know what purpose is inside your child. Hannah's boy grew up to be a prophet, y'all. Now listen, I'm not prophesying saying that little Zion is going to be a prophet. What I am saying is that there is purpose inside of him. And in order for him to fulfill this God-given purpose, Dominique, you have to make sure, you have to make sure that you keep him before the Lord. Amen? Amen, amen and amen. And so, Dominique, you have the responsibility, the solemn responsibility of being the spiritual leader for your child. You must give clear spiritual direction. To do this, you must be personally connected yourself with the Lord, having a living and growing relationship with Him. 
You must show yourself to be faithful to his commandments and walking in his ways. You ought to take your handsome son. Now listen, I don't have handsome here, but I had to add that when I just laid eyes on him. Your, 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 your handsome, handsome son, and teach him to love God and to love everything that God stands for. It is your duty, Dominique, to help him early to discover what his purpose in life is. You've also been called to protect him from those that might want to do him harm. It is your calling to teach little Zaire what it really means to be a child of God. And so to the mother, do you, Dominique, by coming forward, and you can simply say, I do after this, by coming forward, hereby declare your desire to dedicate yourself and little Zaire to Jesus Christ. She said, I do. Amen, somebody. Do you promise to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might? Amen. Amen. Do you promise as his parent okay. that you will use home, school, church, and every other means possible and available in helping this little one to learn to love Jesus? I do. Amen. And last but not least, okay. family. I say family and friends. And North Church family. Come on, y'all, let's stand to our feet in North Church family. Do you, do you, do you hear this day? Promise to support Dominique and little Zaire through your prayers, church programs, and a nurturing church atmosphere. Family, friends, and church family, what do you say? We do. I do. Amen and amen. Let's put our hands together and give God some praise. All right. And that's how I, I promise I'm not going to say a long prayer because I know you're a little antsy. You want to move around. I get it. I want to ask the family to come on and draw closer. Dominique, why not you come on in here and draw closer? And then, church family, if you'd be so kind and just extend forth your hand, just extend forth your hand as we pray and dedicate this little one. Dear Lord, dear Lord, this is your time. And this is your season to do something, oh God, supernatural. And Lord, we believe that the kind of God you are, there is nothing you do that is average. There is nothing you do that is mediocre. That means the purpose that is already inside little Zaire has to be something, oh God, that's mind-blowing. Has to be something that exceeds our ability to comprehend. And that's why we bring him forth today, oh God. We bring him forth to dedicate him to you. We bring him forth, oh God, because we believe that by laying hands on this little one and setting him aside, oh God, we're doing so for a holy purpose. Lord, you know the last days we're living in. You know, oh God, all of the temptations. But I pray, oh God, I pray, oh God, that even now you will place a hedge of protection around this little one and his mother. Even now, oh God, that you will pour into him. Even now, oh God, you will fill him with your spirit. Even now, oh God, you will cover him with your precious blood. Even now, oh God, I pray that you be with the mother, family and friends. This little one needs all the support he can possibly get. Help the parent, oh God, the mother, sister Dominique, sister Dominique, and those who are here today, oh God, to not turn a blind eye when they see this little one going astray. But, they re but may they remember the word of the Lord. May they remember the responsibility to teach him your ways and to nurture him. Lord, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you will dispatch angels even now. I pray right now, God, in the name of Jesus that no harm should come his way. I pray right now in the name of Jesus, oh God, that you will bless his coming in and bless his going out. I pray right now, oh God, that sickness will never enter his body. I pray, oh God, that you will begin to even order his steps right now. I pray, oh God, I pray, oh God, 
that when you come again, you will be able to say to little Zaire, well done. Well done. Because Lord, to hear well done, we can't wait until we get older. We must start now. Well done. Because in order to hear well done, we can't wait, oh God, till later. We must start now. I pray, oh God, that when you come, you will be able to say, well done, little Zion. You have been faithful over little. And because of that, I will make you ruler over much. Enter in into the joy of the Lord. Lord, set this little one apart for a holy purpose to bring glory to your name. This we pray in the blessed name of Jesus. All God's people said amen. 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 And amen. Come on, put your hands together and give God some praise in this place today.
Sister Blackson's grandson, I believe. I believe she lost her grandson. And 
And on behalf of this church, the North Church, we want you to know that we are praying for you, Sister Blackson, and your family. But beloved, on a lighter note, but you don't see these individuals dressed in white for no reason. It's quiet in here today. You don't see these individuals dressed in white for no reason. These individuals decided to dedicate their lives to the Lord and rededicate their lives to the Lord. And what a blessing it is to demonstrate by going down in the watery grave. And so after, after the sermon, we are going to witness the baptism of these lovely five candidates. Come on, put your hand together, North Church. And I just want you to know I am so proud of each and every one of you. And more importantly, God is proud and God is pleased. You need to know that. God is pleased. Without further ado, beloved, I want to take your attention. I want to be mindful of the time today. I want to take your attention to 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 20. 2 Kings chapter 20. I want to just look at verses 1 through 6 for just a moment. While you're looking for it, I want to just thank AJ for blessing us. For blessing us real good. I want to thank our band for just always coming through and blessing us real good. Second Kings, chapter 20, verses 1 through 6. When you get there, say, I got it, preacher. Would you be so kind, those of you who are willing and able to just stand to your feet all over this beautiful sanctuary? For those of you who are new, we do this for two reasons. How many reasons? How many reasons? We do it for two reasons. Number one, we do it to shake off some of that sleep-itis. Come on, say amen, somebody. I'm not the only one who went to bed at one o'clock last night. Come on, talk back to me. Number two, number two, number two, we do it in order to, to honor the sacred word of God. We do it to honor the sacred word of God. Second Kings, chapter 20, verses one through six, reading from the English Standard Version. Notice what the Word of God says. In those days, Hezekiah, what name did I say? In those days, Hezekiah became sick and was at the point of death. And Isaiah the prophet, Isaiah the who? Love it when you talk back to me. Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amaz, came to him and said to him, Thus says the Lord, set your house in order for you shall die and you shall not recover somebody shall Lord have mercy verse 2 then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord saying now O Lord please remember how I have walked before you in faithfulness and with a whole heart and have done what is good in your sight and Hezekiah wept bitterly he cried bitterly and before Isaiah had gone out of the middle court, before he left the house, y'all, before he left the crib, the word of the Lord came to him. Verse 5, turn back, turn back, and say to Hezekiah, the leader of my people, thus said the Lord, the God of David your father, I have heard your prayer, and I have seen your tears. Behold, I will heal you. I will heal you. I think you got it, my sister. On the third day, something about that third day, you shall go up to the house of the Lord, and I will add 15 years to your life. I will deliver you in this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria and I will defend this city for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. Verse 6 once more for emphasis just the first portion the A clause and I will add 15 years to your life and I will add 15 years and I will add 15 years to your life. 
Beloved, just for a moment, because, because, because we have a baptism to do afterwards, just for a moment, I want to preach and teach from a subject simply entitled, I need an extension. I need an extension. I need an extension. Let's pray, Father in heaven, it is now your time. And I'm simply asking that you do what you do best. And that is get all the glory you so deserve. Holy Spirit, I'm asking that you do what you do best. And that is allow this word, this holy word, this sacred word, this majestic word to find a lodging place in the hearts of your people. And then last but not least, we say thank you, Jesus. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. We say thank you, Jesus, for allowing them to put holes in your hands and holes in your feet that you may feel the holes in our hearts. This we pray in the blessed name of Jesus. All God's people, both online and in the house, said amen, amen, amen and amen. Just before you see it, would you be so kind of just turn to your neighbor and say neighbor? neighbor. Say it like you mean it, say neighbor. neighbor. Say oh neighbor. Hold on, hold this time. Oh, It's only north from here. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I need an extension. I need an extension. Is there anybody in the house today who needs an extension? Ah, I see you, I see you. I need an extension. North Church and those of you who tune in online, I believe it is safe to assume that most of us, if not all of us, at one point in our lives needed an extension. Am I talking to anybody? Like the way you talk back to me. Maybe, maybe, maybe it was a deadline you had to make on your job in order to make your quota. You thought you had more time to get it done? Mm -hmm. You thought you had adequate resources to accomplish the goal? You thought, oh, you thought you had co-workers that would assist you accordingly. And as the deadline crept upon you like a smooth criminal, ready to rob you of your dignity, you recognized that what you needed more than anything was an extension. Somebody shout extension. Maybe, maybe, maybe it was a school assignment that you were quite aware of for weeks, if not months, in advance. You thought you could procrastinate like you've done before and, and still get it done on time. You thought you could rely on your classmate to send you the notes necessary for the assignment. You thought, oh, you thought you could rely on your ability to complete the work fast to make the deadline. And as you began to sweat profusely, knowing that the likelihood of you finishing on time was slim, you recognize that what you needed more than anything was an extension. Let me when you talk back to me. Maybe, maybe you needed a bill paid at some point or another. Oh, come on, talk back to me. I know I'm not the only one who fell short at the end of the month before. I'm not the only one who robbed Peter in order to pay Paul before. I'm not the only one who had to decide between the light bill and the water bill. I'm not the only one who put in the overtime, but the check still wasn't enough. I'm not the only one I, who, who picked up a second job, but the check still wasn't enough. Inflation is stressing you out. Gas prices are eating you alive. Rent is too much to endure and so it is time for you to pay the piper. When it's time for you to pay what you owe, you recognize that what you need more than anything, go on, talk to me church, is an extension. Somebody shout extension. Has anybody ever been there before? Has anybody ever needed an extension before? Has anybody ever needed something extended before? You wanted to meet that quota. You wanted to make that deadline. You wanted to make the cut. But, 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 but when your many attempts failed you, <laughs> you knew that the one thing you can benefit most from was an extension. I'm in the Bible now. Walk with me. 
When we get to 2 Kings chapter 20, mm -hmm, we are introduced to a man who is in need of an extension. Help me, Holy Ghost. This man is none other than King Hezekiah. Now, before we proceed, I think it's extremely important that you understand what, what, what kind of king we're dealing with here. For there were many kings that have gone before him. There were many kings that had preceded him. Ah, for there were many kings that have gone before him. And out of all of those kings, ah, and all of those kings, and all of those kings were not faithful kings. All of those kings were not spiritual kings. All of those kings, as they were, were not wise kings. In fact, the former king, King Ahaz, who happens to be Hezekiah's very own father, the Bible describes as a wicked king. Stick with me, just laying the groundwork, stick with me. This ought to bless somebody real good right here because it signifies that everything doesn't have to be passed down. Everything doesn't have to continue in the same fashion. Cycles can be broken. Family dynamics can shift. The right leadership can emerge and emerge it did. King Hezekiah. I said, King Hezekiah reigned over Judah for 29 years. He wasn't just in and out. But he reigned said, for 29 years. And, and, and he was not an old man when his reign started. He was not a seasoned man when his reign commenced. He began his reign, Pastor Hall, at the tender age of 25 years old. Can you believe it? He started his reign, Brother Carl, Elder Carl, at the tender age of 25 years old and was more zealous than any previous king he served under. I'm giving you context now. This is why we shouldn't dismiss our youth. It's quiet right about this point. This is why we shouldn't dismiss our youth and keep them from major leadership responsibility. It is one thing to be young and experienced and immature, but when God has his hand on a young president, when God has his hand on a young pastor, when God has his hand on a young leader, when God in the midst of choosing leaders to serve at this great church, the North Church, right now. And you better believe God wants generational diversity. Yes, he wants older people serving, and yes, he wants middle-aged people serving, but God also wants young leaders serving too. So if you are a young person, hit, hit. And so if you are a young person, hit, hit. And so if you are a young person and you are thinking about serving, if you are a young person and you are considering serving, if you are a young person and you think your age disqualifies you, I come to tell you this afternoon that age in the sight of God is never a disqualifying factor because God will use who he wants, when he wants, and how he wants and there was nothing your naysayers can do about it. Talk back to me if you can. King Hezekiah. Say King Hezekiah is 25 years old. Young man. King Hezekiah 25 years old still wet behind the ears. King Hezekiah young man who is responsible for many who are probably double if not triple his age. King Hezekiah is 25 years old and God has entrusted him with kingship. 25 years old and God has entrusted him with an entire kingdom. But we complain Twenty 
25. These are all. And God has entrusted him with kingship. King Hezekiah was more zealous than any previous king he served under. During this time, beloved, both Isaiah and Micah were ministers in the kingdom, following his example to live by faith. Stick with me. After his father's evil reign, y'all, and it was an evil reign, Hezekiah courageously cleaned up after his wicked father and reopened the temple in Jerusalem. He also reinstated the Levitical priesthood. He reinstated Passover so that revival would come to Judah once again. Hezekiah made sure that pagan altars, idols, and temples were all destroyed including the bronze serpent that Moses had made in the desert. King Hezekiah, I said King Hezekiah, had a thriving kingdom because he put God first in everything that he did. He had a thriving kingdom because he trusted God rather than man. He had a thriving kingdom because his desire was to please God. And as a result of Hezekiah's faithfulness, God blessed him with favor. As a result of his faithfulness, God blessed him with grace. And as a result of his faithfulness, God blessed him with protection. When the Assyrians attempted to invade Jerusalem, God sent forth an angel to put to death 185,000 in the Assyrian camp. Are oh, you listening to me? Are oh, you listening to me? God promised to protect Jerusalem and his people and protect them. He did. This is just a small glimpse of how this young king governed himself. And after carrying himself in God-like fashion, after cleaning up the mess his father left behind, after following the commands of God without deviating, the last thing you would expect this king to receive is a death notice from the prophet. Your Bible says that the prophet Isaiah came to him. He came to him. He didn't shoot him a text, but he came to him. I, he didn't forward an email, but he came to him. He wasn't in Hezekiah's DMs, but he came to him. He showed up in the flesh, y'all. And when he showed up, he showed up with a message from the Lord. Oh, how serious it is when the message comes from the Lord. Because see, there's a whole lot of messages going on. There's a whole lot of messages going forth, but every message is not from the law. Oh, how serious Elder Powell it is when the message comes from the Lord. The prophet Isaiah is just the messenger. The prophet Isaiah is just, thank you, the messenger. But the message, somebody say message. But the message, somebody say message. But the message is coming from God. Don't miss this now. Hezekiah has become severely ill. Mm -hmm. Vicky, can I say it like we say it in St. Louis? He was sick as a dog. And while on his sick bed, the prophet Isaiah shows up and says, the Lord has sent me to tell you to set your house in order. In other words, get your affairs in order. For you shall die. And you shall not recover. Somebody shout, Lord have mercy. This unfortunate and discouraging message really leaves this brother with no hope. I mean, if it was me, I would be terrified of this kind of news. But if the message ended with set your house in order, I would still have a little hope. But if you continue after that statement, 
by telling me that I shall die and I shall not recover. The little ounce of hope that I was holding on to is gone out the window, y'all. Am I talking to anybody? Isaiah did not come with flowery words. He did not bring a sympathy card. He didn't bring a letter of condolences with anticipation of what's to come. He wasn't beating around the bush. He went directly to Hezekiah with a word directly from the Lord. Hezekiah, the Lord said, I'm just a mouthpiece, the Lord said, I'm just a prophet, but the Lord said, set your house in order, for you shall die, and you shall not recover. Oh, although Hezekiah just received this terminal news, I want you to notice how he responds. Because it's one thing to receive something, it's another thing in how you respond to it. Although Hezekiah just received this terminal news, I want you to notice, beloved, how he responds. The Word of God tells us in verse 2 that King Hezekiah turned his face to the wall. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The Word of God says that, 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 that when he got the news, he turned his face past the so dramatic to the wall. I'm just giving you what the Word says. He turns his face to the wall. Scholars suggest that Hezekiah's bed was most likely positioned up against the wall. And as Hezekiah receives this damaging and heartbreaking news, he turns and faces the wall in order to hide his emotions and his tears from the onlookers. Do the best I can. He turns to face the wall. He turns to face the wall. He turns to face the wall in order to hide his emotions and his tears from the onlookers. He turns and faces the wall in order to deal with his circumstance. You see, many of us may not face the wall when we find ourselves in these unfortunate situations, but we face something. It's quiet in here. Some of us turn and face the music in order to deal with our problems. Many of us turn and face the bottle in order to deal with our baggage. A lot of us turn and face the blocks in order to deal with our trials. We face the TV screen to deal with it. We face the plate to deal with it. We face social media to deal with it. And while Hezekiah could have turned many places, he turns and faces the wall. He turns and he faces the wall in order to position himself to bombard the throne room of God with sincere, intense, and agonizing prayer. I said he turns and faces the wall in order to bombard the throne room of God with intense, and sincere and agonizing prayer. He turns and he faces the wall. Hezekiah receives the message, Pam. Good to see you. He receives the message, my sister, but he didn't accept it. Oh, Jesus. He receives the message, with him, but he did not receive it. Ah, Brother Goldsmith, he, he, he received the but he did not accept it. His face, he faced the wall and poured out to God. I say he poured out to God. He poured out to God. It wasn't one of those weak, rehearsed, surface, and frivolous prayers that we like to pray today. But it was the kind of prayer 
there that has tears falling like raindrops from your eyes. It was the kind of prayer where snot is running down your nose. It was the kind of prayer that comes from the basement of your heart. It was the kind of prayer that you pray when you are wrestling with God. Listen to me. He didn't pray one of those prayers that we are accustomed to today. But he prayed like his life literally depended on it. Why? Because his life literally depended on it. I don't know who I'm talking to in this place today, but I wonder what would happen if you started praying like your life literally depended on it. What would happen to your marriages if you prayed like your life depended on it? What would happen to your finances if you prayed like your life literally depended on it? What would happen to your children if you prayed like your life depended on it? What would happen to our church if you prayed like your life depended on it? What would happen to your health if you prayed? Like your life literally, literally depended on it. King Hezekiah prayed to God like his life literally depended on it. Why? Because his life literally depended on it. And what he essentially said to God in his prayer was God, I know what the verdict is. God, I received the message from the prophet. But God, there is something that I am in desperate need of. God, oh God, I need an extension, Lord. I know my time is up, but I need an extension, Lord. I know my time cord has been stacked, but I need an extension, Lord. I know it's time for me to rest, but I need an extension, Lord. And Lord, I know that when I can't make the rent, the landlord can offer me an extension. Lord, I know when I can't pay the light bill, the electric company can offer me an extension. Lord, I know, I know, I know when I can't make the car payment, I, the bank can offer me an extension. But Lord, I'm in need of a life extension and only you can offer that God. Lord, I need I need an extension. I'm almost done. King Hezekiah doesn't just pray to God but he pleads with him. He doesn't just pray to God but he pleads with him. He prays one of those ugly prayers. The kind of prayer where you don't care who's looking. And you don't care how you looking. The kind of prayer where you get as loud as you want. Because, I simply because it don't matter who's in the room and what their judgment is. The kind of prayer that you're so deep into that nothing else matters. And while you're praying, you're not being distracted. You ain't thinking about the foods you're about to eat while you're praying. You ain't thinking about how long the service is while you're praying. You ain't thinking about what you got to do tonight while you're praying. But you're so locked in. Why? Because your life. Because your life. Because your life. Literally. It depends on it. Ah, give me some. Give me some. King Hezekiah doesn't just pray to God, but he pleads with him. Hezekiah doesn't just pray to God, but he agonizes with him. King Hezekiah says, Lord, please remember how I have walked before you in faithfulness and with a whole heart and have done what is good in your sight. And your Bible says, your Bible Mine say it too, by the way. But your Bible says 
that when Hezekiah prays that prayer, that extension prayer, that before the prophet Isaiah left the house, y'all, he hadn't even left the premises yet, y'all. The Bible tells us that before Isaiah left his house, the word of the Lord came to him again. God told Isaiah to turn back and tell him, I have heard his prayer and I have seen his tears. He told Isaiah to turn back and tell him, I will heal him. And on that third day, God, is just something about that third day? On that third day, there's just something about that third day. He shall go up and to the house of the Lord and I will add hmm, help me Jesus and I will add thank you Lord and I will add 15 years says the Lord but I'm going to do it on the third day there's something about the third day I stop by to tell somebody today that God doesn't just extend to you, but God was extended for you. Oh, Jesus. I came to tell somebody today that God doesn't just extend to you, but God was extended. right now under the sound of my voice help me Jesus who are in need of an extension and if that's what you need ah, come on get ready AJ if that's what you need I encourage you to turn and face Ooh, the wall if that's what you need I encourage you to turn, somebody say turn, and face, somebody say face, the wall. I encourage you to pray to God like your life literally depends on it. I encourage you to not accept the death notice. Don't accept the defeat notice. Don't accept the divorce notice. Don't accept the eviction notice. Instead, plead with God. Agonize with God. Wrestle with God. Trust in God. Because God is still in the extension business. God is still in the extension business. And there is an extension. Ah, AJ. There is an extension 
with your name on it. God extended Hezekiah's life 15 years. But 15 doesn't have to be yours. God can give you 20. God can give you 30. God can give you 40. God can give you 50. And who knows how much God has already extended to your life. Your time probably came up 30 years ago, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, 5 years ago. And if it had not been for the Lord extending your life, where would you be? God is still in the extension business. And there is an extension, beloved, with your name on it. Come on, put your hands together and give God your praise.
say amen. We have five who have decided to go down in the watery grave and commit their lives to Jesus. And, and I hear five people clapping when I should hear the whole church giving God some praise. Right now we have We have Gerald and Lorraine Ricks, Tahaya Jackson, Marilyn Thurman, and Barbara Stevens. They're about to give their lives to the Lord. I want y'all to sing so they can hear. Do you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord? And do you desire to live your life in a saving relationship with him? Do you accept the teachings of the Bible as expressed in the statement of fundamental beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventist Church? And do you pledge by God's grace to live your life in harmony with these teachings? Do you desire to be baptized as a public expression of your belief in Jesus Christ, to be accepted into the fellowship of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and to support the church and its mission as a faithful steward of your personal influence, tithes, and offerings, and a life of service? Church, you have heard them. They've given their, their lives to Jesus. Do I have a vote to accept them into the Seventh-day Adventist Church? Yes, yes, yes. Do, do, can I hear an amen? Yes. Amen. Amen. You know, I told Gerald that when he gave his life to the Lord, and it goes for all of them, that the angels in heaven celebrated. Why aren't you celebrating? You, you should be celebrating. You should be giving God some glory because five souls are on their way to the kingdom to God be the glory, great things he has done. So love be the world that he gave us his son who yielded his life blood and atonement for sin. And all of us can be grateful for what he's done.
to baptize you, Sister Mary, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost.
Let's put our hands together and give God some praise. from God. You never know when God is going to move on you. You never know when the Holy Spirit is going to sweep over you. And when he does, my prayer, my prayer is that you do not harden your heart. Is that you do not dismiss the Spirit of God. Is that you do not ignore the promptings of God. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I believe somebody right now is still in the need of an extension. And you're saying, Pastor, I need an extension. Lord, I need it so bad that I want to demonstrate it by going down with that watery grave and coming up to newness of life. I don't know who I'm talking to, but it don't have to be today. It don't have to be next week. It doesn't have to be next month. But you've made up in your mind you made up in your mind that you're going to follow God and take his word at heart. And because of that, you're saying you too want to be baptized. You too want to go down in the watery grave. And you want to come up this time receiving every extension possible that the Lord wants to offer your way. And if there's one in the house right now, if there's one in the house right now, I just, I just dare you, I encourage you I encourage you to be bold enough to just lift your hand right where you are. You say, Pastor, it's me you're talking to. It's me. I need to go down in that watery grave. It's me, Pastor. I need that extension. It's me, Pastor. You're saying, I want to be baptized. Is there one in the house today? Is there one? Is there one in the house today? You're saying you don't care what people are thinking. You don't care who's looking, but you've made up in your mind that you're going to make your calling and election sure. Is there one? Is there one in this house today? Thank you, Jesus. Oh, heads bowed, eyes are closed. Heads bowed, eyes are closed. Father in heaven, we're so thankful for how you've moved on today. We're thankful, oh God, for making it plain. That oftentimes, our prayer, oh God, is not as sincere as it ought to be. It's not as passionate as it ought to be. Lord, we can't just keep coming to you like you're just any old body. But when we come to you, oh God, may we come to you like the holy king that you are. And when we open our mouths and make our requests known, allow us, oh God, to meet it from the bottom of our hearts. Lord, we're in need of extensions on today. And we know that only you can provide it. And so, Lord, I pray for every person right now. I pray, oh God, for the baptismal. Oh, Lord, for those who've given their lives to Christ, who have just got baptized. I pray, oh God, that you will continue to walk with them, talk with them, hold them, carry them, bless them, order their steps, oh God. Lead them, oh God. I pray for them. That you will now use them to be living, walking epistles in these last days. Lord, thank you for the word. For Hezekiah isn't the only one who needed an extension. I believe if we can all be honest today, we need it too. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's in Jesus' name we pray. All God's people say amen. Amen. Amen.